Good evening. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church tonight. Let's all get a songbook, stand and turn to page 101. Page 101. <laughs> It's certainly good to be in the Lord's house, certainly good to see you here tonight, and uh, we thank the Lord for the good day that he's given us, the good week thus far that he's given us, amen, uh, met every need in our lives, and helped us each and every day, and uh, we are blessed, amen, uh, as the people of God, and as we go to the Lord in prayer tonight, uh, let's pray for the service, uh, let's uh, continue to remember our country in prayer, amen. God will, I'm glad the Bible tells us that the, uh, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. I know God can do anything, amen, and I'm glad my hope's in the Lord, amen, which made heaven and earth. I, I'm trusting him tonight, and uh, so we just got to keep our eyes on the Lord. I, Brother Steve Wagers, he put something today I saw. Did y'all see that what he put on there? He said, uh, said, Joe's in the White House, and Pelosi's in the house but said the, the Lord's in the church house and everything's all right in my father's house hallelujah something to that effect it might not have been exactly but I thought that was pretty good amen and uh, so uh, as we pray tonight uh, let's remember brother Bill Shoemaker's family brother Bill passed away yesterday uh, from my understanding and uh, so remember the family there that God would meet the needs in their lives. 
don't know anything. And, uh, just, uh, Marcia's granddaughter's husband called me today and told me about it. And uh, so uh, just remember the family there. Amen. God will meet that need. Remember Brother Mike Edcock, he had surgery uh, this morning. He's at home, everything went well, they said. And so let's pray for him as he recovers. <coughs> that God would meet that need there. Amen. Pray that the Lord is able. And uh, just continue to remember all the others that are sick tonight uh, among the church. That God will meet their every need. Amen. Any others? Also remember Brian Revis. Brian Revis had to go in the hospital and they had to change that uh, uh, machine that's keeping him alive. I can't remember what this the heart thing he has to have on all the time. That pack, some kind of eye pack or something. I forgot what they call it. But he had to have it changed. And uh, so he's still in the hospital. I saw where he, they were able to get him up today and walk him around one time. So pray for him. He's, he's waiting on a, uh, he needs a heart. I think they said four and a half years now with that one machine. So they had to change it out, and he still needs a heart transplant. Amen. So just pray that God will meet that need there. Pray for his family. Amen. The Lord will help them. Any others tonight that we need to pray for? pray tonight, just pray the Lord's will be done, just thank him for another privilege to gather in the house of the Lord, pray the Lord help us here this evening. Stand and turn to page 311. Page 311. <laughs>
evening. Oh, and I'm going to get my girls to come and sing for us tonight. And uh, while they're coming, uh, of course, starting the first Sunday of February, we're going to go back to Sunday school, starting at 10 o'clock. So just be much in prayer about that. Try to get back to as much of normal as we possibly can. Amen. It's been almost a year we've been dealing with this uh, mess. So praying that God will soon get it out of our way. Amen. Everybody will get well, stay well. And, uh, nobody else will get sick, especially that we don't want to see anybody die from it. I'm sure there's been a lot of folks that's suffered a lot this past uh, year, and so we need to pray that God will continue to bless, amen. Pray for the girls they sing.
first of all. <laughs> he loves me. I'm glad he loves you, but I, I'm glad he loves me. Amen. If you have your Bible this evening, turn to the book of Colossians, chapter number one. Colossians, chapter number one. While you're turning there, I want to say again, it is good to see you all here tonight in the service. We welcome those that are watching by live stream as well. And uh, looking forward to the Lord's Day coming. And excited about what God's going to do. Amen. And uh, also, don't forget the uh, on the last Sunday of this month, the, oh, that's the 31st, I believe. Uh, the choir will be having practice on that Sunday, so also don't forget that as well. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter number 1. And I want to begin reading in verse number 9. The Bible says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with might, with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the privilege to gather here in the house of the Lord on this Wednesday evening. We thank you, Lord, for the good week thus far that you've blessed us with. We thank you, Father, for taking care of every need that we've had, Lord, in our lives. And we just want to say thank you again, God, for loving us. God, thank you for saving us. Lord, thank you tonight that we are your children. And Father, I pray that you'd help me for a few moments this evening, Lord, to be able to preach from thy word, God, that our hearts would be open, our hearts would be receptive, uh, Father, to the word of God, that, Lord, the word can change our lives, and Lord, that the Word can encourage our hearts. God, I pray that you would bless in every need among each and every one that's in this building tonight. For those, uh, Lord, who are watching, I pray that you would help them, Father, in their lives. And Lord, especially should there be one under the sound of our voice that does not know Christ, I'm glad, Father, that you're able to save even on a Wednesday night, I pray that the Spirit of God would speak to our hearts. Have your will, have your way. And Lord, everything that you do, we'll thank you for it. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. I want us to uh, look at these verses this evening. And uh, we started looking at the book of Colossians last Wednesday night. And uh, I want to preach on this thought. And look at verse number 10, if you will. And I, this is where we get my thought from. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. And I want to preach on this thought tonight. Don't talk the talk if you're not going to walk the walk. Paul said, walk worthy, amen, of the Lord. By way of introduction, I want to tell you a story about a man by the name of Ferdinand de Mera. He was born in December 19th, 1921, and he died on June the 7th, 1972. While to many he may have been just another name, but Ferdinand de Mero, over the course of 30 years, lived a very interesting life. For example, he taught classes in psychology. He worked as a zoologist. He served as the dean of the School of Philosophy in a school in Pennsylvania. He taught science at a boys' Catholic school. He did research in Seattle. 
He worked as a civil engineer in the Yucatan. He directed a student counseling center. He taught Latin, English, and French at a high school in Maine. He served as a deputy sheriff in Washington State. He was a law student. He served as an assistant warden of a Texas prison, and he counseled terminally ill patients at Good Samaritan Hospital in California. You're probably thinking, well, he was an exceptionally brilliant and extremely educated and, and energetically driven. But the truth of the matter is this. Ferdinand de Mera had never finished high school. The fact he was an imposter for all those years. They even made a movie called The Imposter because of his story. And possibly the boldest and greatest deception occurred during the Korean War. He posed as a lieutenant surgeon in the Royal Canadian Navy. He absorbed as much as he could from medical texts and journals and successfully operated on dozens of wounded South Korean servicemen and civilians. On one occasion, he removed a bullet lodged less than an inch from a man's heart. And as a result, he received immediate fame. His name became synonymous with success. He became known around the world as the miracle doctor. Yet all the while, he was nothing more than an imposter. Now, you say, what's that got to do with what we're reading here tonight? Well, Paul is dealing in Colossians chapter number one with authentic Christianity. He is reminding us that if we talk the talk, we must walk the walk. Amen. Verse 10, as we've read. Now, last Wednesday, we examined the basics of the gospel. And one of the things that we established was the power that was contained in the gospel. While society informs a man and, uh, and reforms a man, but yet the gospel transforms a man, makes a new creature out of him. Amen. And so as believers with a new nature being born again and and having the Spirit of God dwelling within us, we are now to walk, amen, a walk for God and walk with God. We're to walk the walk if we're to talk the talk. I want you to know it's just three things tonight that Paul is saying about the type of walk that we should have to characterize our lives. Well, I'm, I'm praying after I read that story, I... I hope those doctors that's operated on me knew what they were doing, amen. And if I have to have any future surgeries, I hope it ain't an imposter. But notice the walk that Paul is talking about in the church and in the Christian life. First of all, our lives should be characterized by a walk that glorifies the person of Christ. He said that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. That word, the words all pleasing uh, means and refers to a clinging or a subservient habit. It spoke of a servant who was ready to say anything or do anything to please his patron, to be able to please his employer, to be able to please his master. And so we need to learn to walk worthy of the Lord in all pleasing, in everything that we do. Amen. Our walk as a believer should have one goal, and that is to please the Lord. You see, it matters not if you please me, but it does matter if you please the Lord. It doesn't matter if I please you, but it does matter if I please the Lord. And so it's important that we please Him in everything that we say, think, or do, that it be done in a manner that pleases the Lord. 
If there's anything the church needs to do today, that's to live to please the Lord. Amen. Uh, as we think about pleasing the Lord and doing what God would have us to do and, and walking worthy, I, I say, first of all, there's some things that we are to know. Now, twice in two verses, Paul mentions something of importance that we are to know in order for us to be able to walk and our walk to glorify God. In verse number 9, he says that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And then in verse number 10, he says to be increasing in the knowledge of God. That word filled in verse number 9 carries the idea of being fully equipped. Amen. And it, was in, it was used in that day to describe a ship that was ready for a long voyage. And so Paul is saying that our knowledge of God and, and the things of God is to be complete. That prepares us for our walk with the Lord. Now, these verses is Paul's prayer for the Colossian believers. He's expressing his heartfelt desire for them to know God in an individual and an intentional and an intimate manner. He's praying that they may understand the great truths of Christianity and that they may be able to apply these truths uh, uh, to the task and to the decisions uh, that they make in their lives. Why? So that everything they do would be pleasing unto the Lord. Beloved, it is important for you and I to live pleasing to God. Amen? To be pleasing to the Lord. Oh, listen, if you disregard the study of God and you sentence yourself to stumble and blunder through life blindfolded, as it were, and, and with no sense of direction and no understanding of what surrounds you. But we need to be filled uh, uh, with the knowledge of His will and with the knowledge of God in our lives to be able to walk worthy of the Lord. As your pastor tonight, my greatest desire is for you to know God. I'm not just talking about knowing about God, but know God. Amen. I mean, to know him. As Paul says that we may know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings. I mean, we just need to get to know him more and more. You and I tonight, we know about him, don't we? But do we know him? I mean, do we really get close to him? Amen? And so he talks about our lives and how that we are uh, to walk with God. There's some things that we are to know, but secondly, he talks about how we are to grow. We're to grow. Here I am. I've been uh, uh, saved for a long time, but I, I don't know all every. I don't know everything. Matter of fact, I've just scratched the surface of what there is to be able to know about the Lord and the things of God. Amen? And there's always room for growth in any child of God's life. That's why verse number 10, he explains that we are things that we are to know, but we are to grow in our walk that glorifies the Lord, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, Paul, as we preached last Wednesday night, Paul had uh, heard of their faith. As I mentioned last week, we don't, they don't think that Paul ever physically and personally was at this church. He never did get to go there and, and be with them in person. But yet, he says, we have heard of your faith in the Lord. And, uh, and what he had heard of had, and what had taken place in their lives, he, he heard about it, he knew about it. And so he's not telling them that they needed some new spiritual experience. Amen. It seems like today everybody's interested in a new experience, uh, something big happening. All the, hey, it's not that that we need. If you're saved, 
The biggest thing that will ever happen to you has happened to you. You got saved, amen, by the grace of God. And so he's not talking about a new spiritual experience, that, but that they needed to grow in the experience that they already had. Amen. Praise God. I don't ever want to get over what God did for me. Never. I just want to know more about it. Amen. I just want to know more about it. And so they were to grow to the point that they were being fruitful in every good work. Now, being fruitful, uh, it denotes a continual process. Hey, listen, we're, we're growing all the time, and, and we should be growing all the time spiritually. Amen? I think sometimes I'm growing all the time physically. Uh, but uh, And I know I'm growing older all the time, but I need to grow spiritually, amen, in my life. And we're to be able to do that, being fruitful. Praise God. I, I believe tonight there ought to be some fruit being born uh, from the lives of God's people. And the only way that we can bear fruit is to walk worthy of the Lord, to know the will of God, to know and to have the knowledge of God in our lives. Amen. The question tonight is this, are we making spiritual progress in our walk with the Lord? Has our walk with God got better or has it got worse? Amen. Amen. I mean, listen, we, you, there's no stopping point in standing still. You're either moving forward or you're going back. Amen? And so uh, you and I tonight, we need to think about that. I, I, I need to think about it for my own life. Am I a better Christian? Am I closer to God? Am I doing what I should be doing? Am I living my life to please the Lord? That's what I should be interested in. Why? Because it's all about Him. Amen? The Christian life does not include a retirement age when you get to the point that you stop walking with God. We walk with God till we walk right out of this world, amen. We're just going to walk with God till we just walk right into the, the city of heaven, praise God, one of these days. I, I'm telling you, we need to, it, it should be a constant matter of our growing. I, I was reading this the other day. There was a, a young teenage boy during World War II. He tried to join the Navy. Y'all two Navy men sitting there. He tried to join the Navy, he, but he was only 15 years old. And he was a big, I mean, he was big for his age. He was a big old boy. And uh, so he went and he tried to join the uh, Navy and, and at 15. And when he walked into the recruiting office and the officer Asked him, he said, how old are you? He said, I'm 15. He said, I'm sorry, son, but said, you're just too young. You, you, we, you cannot, there's no way, we can't do it. Well, about a few weeks later, he walked back in. He said, he said I want to join the Navy. He said, how old are you? He said, I'm 16. He said, you're still too young. There's just nothing we can do. And two months later, he returned to the recruiting office, talked to the recruiter, and uh, the recruiter asked him, he said, how old are you? He said, I'm 17. He said, sorry, son, you're just not old enough. And he waited a few weeks later, came back again. And then he said, the recruiter said, how old are you? He said, I'm 18. And this is what the recruiter said to him. He said, young man, he said, we would really like to have you in our Navy. He said, the only trouble is, he said, you're aging so fast that I'm afraid we will have to put you on Social Security before the war is over, amen. Uh, so, I, I mean, but we need to grow, amen. He was, he was maturing fast, he said, but, oh, I'm telling you tonight, as believers, we ought to desire to be able to grow like that, desire to walk with God, desire to know the Lord and to know his will and, and to have the knowledge of God and to grow in the things of God. Amen. So Paul is telling the church that they needed a walk that glorifies the person of Christ. But not only a walk that glorifies the person of Christ, but they need a, a walk that verifies the power of Christ. Amen. I mean, listen, our lives ought to show something of the power of God. 
Now, when you first got saved, people could see what God had done in your life. And as you live from day to day and from year to year until we get to heaven, our lives ought to portray the power of God continually. Amen. Oh, D.L. Moody once said, every Bible should be bound in shoe leather. Amen. Matter of fact, what he's saying is that the life of every believer should not only be known by what they say, but by what they do. Amen. I mean, listen, everybody can see us day in and day out. I, I mean, no wonder that Paul is saying you need to walk worthy. I mean, it's easy to say something, isn't it? I mean, it's easy to say I love you, but it's, it's another thing to put love in action. I mean, it's easy to say I love the Lord. I mean, praise God, I enjoyed that song. I'm glad he loves me, and I'm glad I love him. And listen, it's easy to say it, but it's another thing when you leave the church house and go out to the world and they begin to watch your life. Amen? And so he, he says we have a walk that should verify the power of Christ in our lives. Our lives will be a living testimony of what the power uh, of God can do. Amen? For two reasons. First of all, his power enables our life. Look at verse number 11. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. Now, did you know who, whose power Paul was speaking of? His power, amen. It's not our power, but it is the power of the resurrected Christ. It's the power of God. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same power that works in your life, in my life. Amen. You see, God, his power is able. God must first make the worker before he can do the work. And so God enables our lives. God is the one that enables our lives to do what we do for him, and it's not of ourselves. It's not we who work for God, but it's God who works for us. Amen. We couldn't do anything without his power. We couldn't do anything without the, the power of God working in our lives. Amen. We would be helpless without his power. In Philippians 2.13, the Bible said, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is him who is working in us. Amen. Praise God. Because we were dead in trespass. We were lost. We were dead and lost and undone. But Jesus came along and gave us life. We were quickened, made alive by the power of God. Amen. And therefore, he is the one that is working in our lives. And notice what he did not say. He did not say that he would strengthen us according to our need. Because I tell you, we reached the end of our need when we got saved. Amen? I mean, listen, we needed him. And I'm glad tonight that God's power, listen to this, God's power is limitless. Praise God. I heard them talking the other day about certain places they had blackouts. The power was out, and people was worried we was going to have a blackout here today. Well, we did have one of sorts, but uh, anyhow, the, we still had power. But uh, I'm glad God's power is limitless. Amen. There's no limit to what God can do in our lives. I'm glad that when you and I got saved, I'm glad that God gave us all the resources that we would ever need to be able to live for him. I'm glad God gave us the spirit of God that indwells each of us who are saved. Can I just go ahead and say this tonight? You'll never have any more of God than you've got right now. Amen? I mean, listen, you'll never have any more. He already indwells you. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen? You'll never have any more of God than what you have right now. Here's the problem, though. 
God don't have us. Amen. God doesn't have us. We must yield our lives unto him. I believe it was D.L. Moody maybe that said it is uh, no telling what, a, what God can do with a one man that is fully yielded unto God. Love it tonight, there's no telling what God could do in my life and yours if we would fully yield to him. His power tonight. I'm glad his power enables our life. Hey, his power enriches our life. Paul explains the result of a life that is enabled by the power of God, and it is enriched by the power of God. Amen. Look at verse number 11. He said, unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. Three things, patience, long-suffering, and joyfulness. And those are three things that cannot be produced on our own. Amen. We can't do it in ourselves. They're only produced in us as his power works in us. Only the power of God can do that in our lives. Amen. Only God can do that. Now, I don't believe that I've ever met anybody that has ever let God have his way in their lives that ever stood up and said, I sure do regret letting God have his way. I've never met anybody like that. I've never heard anybody ever say that. I've never had anybody even consider that because I don't believe you'll ever live to regret yielding yourself unto the Lord. Why? Because his power enriches us. His power enables us, but it enriches our lives. Hey, listen, his power gives you and I something worth living for and, a, and an ability to live, amen, to walk with him and to serve him. When we walk with God and we walk for God and we allow his power to enable us and enrich us, then our walk verifies the truth of a risen Christ. Thank God who has power and thank God is, is able to change other people's lives just like he did your life and my life. A walk that glorifies the person of Christ. Secondly, a walk that verifies the power of of Christ, and then lastly, a walk that amplifies the provision of Christ. Verse number 12, Paul says, Who hath or giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light? Praise God. Paul gives us something encouraging right here. He closes by reminding believers of everything that Christ has given to us. All that he's provided for us, amen. And he does it by telling us two things. First of all, the goal of this provision. Verse number 12, he says, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers. Praise God. I, I'm telling you tonight, God has given us so much. How could we not give thanks? Amen. I mean, how could we not give thanks? In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 6, he says, who, hath, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. You see, the grace of God qualifies the unqualified. It makes us fit. It authorizes us. It makes us able ministers. Amen. I'm glad that we can give thanks unto the Father for that which he has done in our life. To be honest tonight, all of us, if we were honest, there is nothing within any of us that would qualify us to get us to God. Before you got saved, you couldn't get that. There was nothing that we could do. We, were, we would never be good enough to qualify ourselves to get to God. Amen. But I'm glad that through the grace of God, God, we didn't have to get to God, but God came to us. 
Amen. But God's wonderful grace does just that very thing. It desires the undesirable. Boy, isn't that amazing? That God so loved the world, that he so loved sinners, and that's what the grace of God does. It desires the undesirable. I've seen pictures of some of y'all. Before y'all got saved, know how some of y'all lived. You're like myself. You were anything but desirable. Amen. I'm glad through the grace of God, he, he, he desires the undesirable. I'm glad he loves the unlovable. Amen. It reaches the unreachable. And it qualifies the unqualified. Amen. Thus we who had no right to God now have a right to come to God because of this goal, this provision that he has made for you and I because of his grace. I'm glad we can come boldly to the throne of grace when we can give thanks unto the Lord. Not only do we see the goal of this provision, but we see the glory of this provision. Somebody said, Preacher, what are we qualified for? Look at verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. There's the glory of the provision. Now, I'm glad the Bible has a lot to say about our inheritance. Amen. I, I feel sorry for my children. They probably won't have much of an inheritance. But me and mama spending it, amen. But anyhow, but I'm telling you the inheritance we have because we are the children of God. Oh my. And the Bible has much to say about that inheritance as believers. We inherit eternal life. We'll inherit the earth. We inherit the promises of God. We will inherit the city of God. Amen? Hey, did you know we've been given a title deed to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Amen? Praise God. Think about the day we got saved. We became heirs of God. Joint heirs with Christ. I mean, the very moment you got saved. I mean, you've been living a rich life and you didn't even know it. You've got an inheritance that's out of this world. Amen. Yeah, you say, well, preacher, what makes that so exciting? Because this world's not our home. Thank God we're headed out of here. Amen. And oh, he said the day that we got saved, we became the heirs of God and the joint heirs of with Christ. We became the rightful heirs to the inheritance. Uh, can I say tonight that it cannot be transferred and it cannot be destroyed? Praise God. And the inheritance cannot be forfeited. It's ours. Someone put an advertisement out one time and said, and it said like it read like this, and the ad said, free beautiful home to be given away in a perfect city, 100% pure water, free. No light bills, perpetual lighting, permanent pavement, nothing undesirable, everything is new, perfect health, immunity from accidents, the best of society, beautiful music, free transportation, secure your contract today. The down payment has already been made. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that's where I'm headed tonight. And I want to walk worthy. I want to please the Lord. I want my life to count for the cause of Christ. I want to be able to live my life. Uh, thank God that when I get to that place called heaven, uh, thank God as we're enjoying uh, all the beauties and we are enjoying uh, the inheritance that has been uh, laid up for us, that is reserved for us. Uh, thank God when we gather around the throne uh, that we can say we tried uh, to do the best we could. We could do uh, what we could do for the Lord. 
Lord. We could walk uh, our walk for the Lord. Amen. Uh, that people could see Jesus in us. Uh, thank God that we did our best for Christ. Uh, we tried to lift up the bloodstained banner. Uh, we tried to stand on the King James Bible. Uh, we tried to live for God. Uh, try to pray for one another uh, and love one another and reach sinners. Uh, thank God let's walk the walk. Amen. If we're going to talk, we talk. Because there's a better day coming. Amen? There's a better day coming. I don't know about y'all, but it couldn't get here soon enough. The trumpet sounded tonight. We could out go out of here in a shout. Amen? We know there's going to be shouting. Because when the Lord descends from heaven with a shout, He's going to come back and shout. And the, with the shout of the voice of the archangel, and the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ, he's going to raise the dead one of these days. Amen. <laughs> oh, my. Can you imagine what it's going to be like around here when them graves bust open? And then when they get up to ground level, we're going to go with them to meet the Lord in the air. And the Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hey, I'm glad we can not, tonight can walk for the Lord. I want my life to count, don't you? I want to grow. I, I want to be more of what God would have me to be. I want my life to honor the Lord. I want to be able to talk it, but I want to be able to walk it as well. Father, thank you tonight for the Word of God. Thank you for the promises of God Thankful for the power of God. Thank you for the people of God. Lord, I just pray that you'd help us. Lord, to walk as we should, to live our life in all pleasing unto the Lord. God, may your will be done. God, may you help us tonight. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And God, thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. While we stand tonight and our heads are bowed, We're going to talk to talk. We certainly need to walk to walk. Amen. Pray that God will help each of us to walk worthy and well pleasing unto the Lord. Hallelujah. One of these days we're going to face Him. Every one of us tonight that are saved, we're going to face the Lord. We're going to face Him at the judgment seat of Christ. When we get to the judgment seat of Christ, we'll be rewarded for the things done since we've been saved, whether good or bad. Oh, God help us. Let's walk pleasing unto him, knowing that one day we'll give an account of our lives to him. Father, I just want to say thank you again, God, for your word. and pray that you'd help us, God, to receive it and act upon it, believe it, Oh, Father, that we would walk in it and do what it says. God, help us tonight. God, bless your people. Thank you again, God, for everyone here in this building. Thank you, Father, for those who've been watching the live stream. And I pray that you'd bless them, touch the sick ones, and help them, Lord, those in our church. God, I pray that you'd bless them. God, have your will, have your way. And Lord, everything that's done, we'll give you praise and glory. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Certainly appreciate you being here tonight. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And uh, be praying for one another the rest of the week. Praying for the services coming up Sunday. And pray that God will meet with us. Amen. Pray for those that are sick. Pray for those that are discouraged. Let's lift one another up in prayer. Amen. Give a call to some of our folks that maybe have not been coming, ain't, ain't been able to come. Pick up that phone, call them, let them know you miss them. Amen. You never know what it might mean to them. Just drop a line. Say, hey, how you doing? Glad you know I miss you. Amen. And hopefully soon, praise God, we'll be able to get everybody back and, and see more coming in. Most of all, I want to see people get saved. And so let's just pray. Just trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight.
home. Lord willing, we'll see you Sunday morning at 11 o'clock.